Welcome back to Speed Daemon Painting, where today we are looking at the new Tianlong dragons for Dystopian Wars and how to paint them. Now, to get started, we have a few base calls supplied with the airbrush. I started off with uh, Citadel Rust Grey for the base cold, and I applied a zenithal, uh, zenithal coat of grey sear on top of it. Uh, that wasn't the only airbrush work, I also applied some white highlights using some white ink uh, along things like the, the top of the head, the center, the ridges of the fence, etc. After all of the airbrush work is done, I swap to using oil paints for the washing stage, and I'm using an oil wash made out of Payne's Grey. Um, to make an oil wash all you need to do is mix it with some uh, white spirit or mineral spirits as it's known in some parts of the world and just apply it all over the model. Oil washes really have a tendency to creep into the crevices more than water based paints and I think they are an absolute joy to work with. The number one benefit to working with oil washes is that you can clean them up afterwards so you don't get any of those horrible coffee stains. Now to show this I've got two Tianlong dragons, the left one has been cleaned up and the right one has yet to be cleaned up as well. Now if you want to clean up oil washes all you really need to do is use that same mineral spirits or white spirit that you used previously and use something like a cotton bud. Uh, and all you really have to do is dip the cotton bud in that thinner, wipe off most of the excess so you don't just wash all of your previous work away, and then by slightly dragging it across the surface that you've just washed, you can take off all of the stains, all of the excess uh, wash, and just bring back that, uh, that base coat that you have applied beforehand by airbrush or by hand, depends on your favorite way of working. If you want to see more videos on how to use things like oil washes and you want to see more videos about the Dystopian Wars models and how to paint them, I do hope you click like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more future content. Meanwhile we're just checking out me painting or rather removing some of the oil washes and as you can see it really brings back that vibrancy of the base coat that we previously applied and takes care of any of those messy stains that you can sometimes get with uh, a wash. The next bit of footage really shows the strength of the oil wash. You can just remove the excess from flat areas while still leaving it in the deep areas so you get that nice dramatic shading uh, with very minimal effort. With removing the oil washes you can sort of recreate some of the, air, um, the highlights you've created with your airbrush. There's one thing that an airbrush can't do and that is to create sharp edge highlights. And for that there is one method tried and tested that I still prefer even despite some people don't liking it and that's dry brushing. Many people don't like it because it can leave some streaky effects but if you do it well and you just remove most of it like I'm doing here on this bit of toilet paper and then running the makeup brush that I'm using a few times across the back of my hand you can get some razor sharp dry brushes especially on models like you get in Dystopian Wars with that small scale. Uh, you can uh, get some amazing results out of dry brushing that will look good. I don't recommend this technique if you're using things with large flat panels like Space Marines, uh, but with this 2mm scale it really works wonders. With that, most of the work on our dragon is done and all that is left is detailing work. And for the details I've used mostly metallic paints to pick out some areas. Uh, I'm using Iron Hands Steel from Games Workshop for instance in this case to pick out these small details. Now, there's one thing you do have to keep in mind though, you are using silver metallics on a white base coat model, which means it there will be a lot of contrast. So my plan is to use some, uh, some very dark wash in a later stage to create that much needed contrast between white metallics and uh, white model. There's also a few small details picked out in 
a very dark red. I used Vallejo Burned Red for this, later high highlighted with regular flat red. And uh, I'm of course opting for uh, some small details in red to uh, emphasize that whole Japanese theme. Some more detailing was done using Retributor Gold. Now you get a lot of contrast because you are using a very warm gold color on a, uh, an otherwise cold uh, background with a white base coat. And I'm picking out all of the weapons with this uh, simply because you get, they really do stand out. You get some uh, sort of color warmth contrast using this as well. For the black parts, mostly in the face, I revert to using my new favorite color from the Games Workshop Contrast range, and that is Black Templar. There's only one downside to using Black Templar when going for a color scheme like this, and that is that you have to be really, really careful not to hit any of the white parts. Contrast paints are incredibly pigment rich, and even if you make a small splodge somewhere, um, even if you are fast enough and are able to clean it up with a damp brush, uh, there's a good chance that you will still leave some sort of uh, filter across your uh, otherwise crisp white paint job, so do be careful with these. It's not the only contrast paint I've used, I also used some ethermatic blue to emphasize those uh, you know, electro weapons that they have on their claws, and I applied them over a light base coat of Games Workshop Baharoth Blue to really get a, a rich colour going there. After the contrast paints were dried, I was able to go in for a few more details with gold, like those little uh, beads on his uh, yeah, moustache, for the lack of a better description. Um, and yeah, just adds more. Uh, yeah, more detail to really bring out the model itself. Now, after all of the detailing work was done, it needs a bit of a wash to bring it all down and to create that sharp contrast that you need because some of these metallics are fairly inconspicuous next to the other ones. And for the silvers, I used some dark tone, which is a, a very dark wash from uh, Army Painter, but it does have a tendency to leave a, a very glossy finish. So I mix it in with some uh, matte varnish from uh, Winter Newton Galleria to tone that down a bit. And once I've made this mixture, it's all just a case of uh, applying that wash on uh, all of the areas that I previously did silver. Now, the parts I decided to paint silver are the parts where I went like, I don't think they would apply a lacquer finish on any of these parts, like exposed, hydraulic components and that sort of thing. The gold parts were giving a quick wash with uh, Reikland Flesh Shade first. Reikland Flesh Shade over gold has a tendency to make it richer, to make it slightly more vibrant, and so this is perfect to create a first soft shade on them. But unfortunately it doesn't create many high contrast zones, so you will need some, uh, some extra shading uh, later on. This extra shading is provided by Agrax Urshade. Now I used the gloss variant simply because I ran out of the normal variant. Um, I tend to finish all of my models with a, sort of a matte varnish near the end, so I don't really care if it's the gloss variant or, uh, or the normal one. It all gets pretty matted down at the end anyway. And the final and most tedious bit by far is using a mixture of uh, that matte varnish and rust pigments to create a rust wash that I used to pick out all of the rivets, all of the rivets, on this model.
After all of the rivets were uh, picked out, I essentially just slapped a few extra highlights onto the model. That was done off camera mostly because it was just adding a few sharp highlights with white and highlighting some of the, the red. I also finished off the gun turrets and adding those onto the models using some blue tack. So I didn't bother magnetizing the whole thing. Blue tack works just fine on these dystopian wars models. And yeah, that's essentially how I did my Tianwen fleet. If you want to see how I do the Congo fleet that I've ordered in a similar way, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time. Bye!